I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with George Helms, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so now you teach first grade yes. at uh, Arnold Adriani Elementary School. Yes. So how long have you been a first grade teacher? I've been a first grade teacher for about uh, 30, I believe it's 32 years. Wow. I taught a K-1, a 1-2 combo, a second grade, but mostly first grade. Wow. Yeah. Long time. Yes. yes. So now first grade is considered kind of a, a, a building block uh, grade. Uh, sure. But you know, you're kind of laying a foundation. So, so explain why that's a crucial grade in a child's development. Well, the foundational skills are so important. They begin, um, we have to break up and, and give them the secret code of what reading is. Um, to you and I, it's, it's, it makes sense, but for them, every one of those letters, every one of those sounds, it, it, everything is so different. And so it's just a process of breaking it down into pieces and giving, those, giving them those foundational skills. Uh, and then they start to become fluent and they're off and running. And they gain confidence. Oh yes, they start oh, to, to watch their shoulders yeah. go back when they, they can read is, is so exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's a big adjustment because now it's all day. Yes. Well, first grade has always been all day. But right. Well, I they go from me, going, going they from, half, from day kindergarten half day to kindergarten. All, yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's at the beginning of the school year. There's always a, you know when do we go home because mm -hmm. it's yeah. it is a very long day for them. So in that grade, is there something that you emphasize more than others, or are you still are you still at that point where you know yes they're learning, but you're also trying to form that. Uh, understanding of that you're in school and this is the process and this is what we do. There's a whole set of routines and procedures that children need to understand. It's, it's just like learning how to line up, which is a lifelong skill if you're at Disney World, you know, you're still standing in line. Um, there's so many skills that that have a sequential order of, of understanding and so it we start with um, simple things like how to line up for lunch versus what are you gonna do if you don't have a pencil? What are you going to do um, when you're working? What is the procedure to work on a spelling assignment with a partner on the floor? And so they range from simple to complex. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've said that, that sometimes in education there's a disconnect for teachers thinking that what you're delivering is maybe not what the students are receiving. Sure. What, what do you mean by that? Explain that question well, again. I read in your, bro, your, your profile that said you, you said sometimes there's a disconnect between what teachers believe they are delivering and what the students are receiving. Well, there's just some, there's some simple things like um, one of my students said, I'm going to go out and play in the side grass. And I said, well, we don't have any side grass. And they took me outside and they stood on the sidewalk and then they stood on the grass. And that's the sidewalk and that's the side grass. Okay. And sometimes children don't understand the, the, that the concept of, uh, they'll say, Mr. Helms, do you know instead of going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all you have to do is say five, six, seven, eight. Well, those are skills that have been taught over and over and over, but until it connects, mm -hmm. if we don't keep reviewing that and keep showing that in so many different ways, they're not going to get it. Uh, the concept of tens and ones, some of the children just all of a sudden stand up in the middle of a lesson and go, there's really 10 blocks together to make a group of 10. And, and mm -hmm. you and I, as we're teaching, would assume that that is common sense. But for them, that's a whole new discovery and the shoulders go back and they, it's like, now I have access. And the little boy that showed me that, at the end he looked at me like, why wouldn't you take the time to show me that? Mm -hmm. And while I was showing him, he wasn't ready. And there's, so, there's that, you are constantly looking for that disconnect of what they understand, what you're bringing to them, what they're getting, and hopefully it, it, it connects. So you have to think like a six-year-old. Many times, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so when you, when you see that aha moment for a student, what's that like for you as a teacher? It's why I come to work every day. It's, it's when they stand up and when someone shares something like that, They'll come up, if I'm working by myself or with a small group and I'm finished, they'll come up and share something. They'll say, would, would you mind telling that to the class? Go ring the bell and, and do you, you can use the whiteboard if you need to, but would you show them that? Oh yeah, I could show them that. And the child runs over, rings the bell, and I said, so-and-so uh, would like to share with you something that we've been working on a lot and I'm not sure all of us are getting. So you go ahead and be the teacher because I like the way you explained it. 
And then some of the other kids will say, oh yeah, Mr. Helms, that, that is a better way to explain it than you did. And, and so it, it's that constant building of that, that self-confidence that, that wants them to try harder and, lear and learn more. Confidence generates learning. Yes, absolutely. Safe, if they're, if they're feeling safe and secure, they're gonna, they'll do anything. They'll, they'll work like crazy so when you're six. When you're six. <laughs> How do you build that confidence, though? Uh, because some kids you know, struggle to learn. Sure. It's not my classroom. It's our classroom. It is, it, there are so few rules in the classroom. Everything else is a routine and a procedure. This is how we're going to do this. This is how you get to do, this is how you do this, and this is how this is done when you work with a partner. When we have a collaborative conversation, we're going to make some eye contact. When I'm talking, you're going to stop talking and listen, and then it's going to be your turn. And all those things, when they begin to feel successful, that I, I can do that. Sometimes kids say, I, Mr. Helms, I need help. I can't, do th I can't do this. And I'll say, I can't do this yet. Oh, yes, I can't do it yet. Meaning, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be able to do this. Mm. And to celebrate those successes. So you've been teaching first grade for 32 years. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, uh, 30, yeah. More than 30. Sure. What are some of the changes you've seen in education in that, in that expanse of time? Because you're a very experienced teacher. When I started teaching, there weren't telephones in the classrooms. Uh, there weren't computers in the classrooms. There were chalkboards. I, I'm not that old, but mm -hmm. the, the older schools had chalkboards. Now the technology is, is overwhelming. I have a smart board in my classroom. If we wanted to know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile, we had to go down, get the encyclopedia, open up A and open up C, make a copy of it, make a transparency, put it on the overhead transparency, and we could talk about it. Now I can tap a few buttons, type in a few things, and boom, here's up on the smart board is, here's the alligator, here's the crocodile, and we can read all about it. Mm -hmm. So the instant access to technology for children, and, and to teach children how to use that technology responsibly and how, how to evaluate it is, is a tough skill. It's going to be an issue we're going to struggle with in education for a while. And they're growing up with it, so they're infused with it from day one, Yes. whereas you've had to adapt. Yes. Oh, yes. And, and many times uh, the children will say, Mr. Helms, uh, tap the button. No, you have to tap it down there, remember? And Because I'm moving something and it still is, you know, and they're just so much more comfortable with it. They're than, intuitive. Yes, they're, they are. It's totally yeah. intuitive for them. Yeah. So what's it like for you to be named the Teacher of the Year? It is such an honor. It is so humbling. Um, if you knew the staff that I work with and Arnold Adriani to be named uh, out of that group or even the, the people in Elk Grove Unified School District, um, it is a very humbling experience. I'm, I'm really honored. So as a Teacher of the Year, uh, what would you say to uh, a student, a college student who's considering going into education. What's your sales pitch? Go for it. Uh, I have the best job on the planet. It, it, you, get to, you get to start with children that, that come from a variety of ethnic backgrounds, a variety of skill levels, and you get to show them the joy that you got when you were in school. Hopefully you got when you were in school. Um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to go to bed every night and say, you know, I did good work. You know, I, I, I made a difference today. What inspired you to teach? Um, I, I observed uh, way back in the, real quick, way back in the University of Wisconsin, um, I went to my first, I, I needed one unit. I wasn't, I was gonna be a communication major, oh. Tim. And I was, I, I, I had one, uh, I needed one more unit, second uh, semester. And somebody said, take this introduction to elementary education because it's one unit, it's easy. Walked into class, Julia Steinke, I owe her everything. She said, here's a schedule. You will not see me until the last day of class. Be at this school at this time. And they sent us out in La Crosse, Wisconsin to 10, 15 different schools. I sat in the back of the room. And um, I observed and I began to see what I didn't always have in school. Kids lighting up, kids getting excited and watching this teacher not manipulate, but, but transform these kids into uh, wanting to work and wanting to strive. And so I went back and changed my major and started taking education courses. All and, from that and, one unit class. Uh, you know, that, that one class. And that one class brought you here today. Yes. And now you're a teacher of the year for the Elk Grove yes. Unified School yes. District. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Speaking with George Helms from Elk Grove Unified. Thanks very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Tim.